remains of more than 200 children have been located. Hundreds of human remains in unmarked graves at two indigenous residential schools in Canada. Just as it happened in Canada, many indigenous children here in the United States were taken from their families and sent to boarding schools. Until now, the devastating and at times fatal history has never been fully investigated. There was 23 kids that died when my father was at the Chamawa boarding school. Some of them were killed running away. It says here, killed by train while running away, gunshot while running away. For years, Denise Lajmodier has been researching the sprawling network of Native American boarding schools used by the U.S. government to assimilate Native children. This is a photo of my grandfather and his sister at, uh, at boarding school. Uh, grandpa's nine years old. I'm not sure how old this I is. I want America to be aware of what happened to us. I call it America's best kept secret. It was in 65, 66, the Bureau of Indian Affairs, they had a police force and uh, they were going around and they were rounding up some of these kids. And so they came to our house and uh, they picked me up and they put me in the police car. I was uh, 11 and going on 12 when that happened. They put us on a bus, and uh, we're going to this boarding school, Mopton Indian Boarding School. I wrote down uh, a couple of words when I when I tried to explain, uh, trying to describe my experience there. Um, um, abuse, uh, neglect, bullying torture and pain. The federal government's practice of sending Native American children to boarding schools dates back to the 1800s. The boarding schools were part of this larger assimilation uh, policy uh, to de-Indianize the Indian and absorb people into the, the mainstream society. Children taking it as young as four and five years old and forbidden to practice their religion or speak their language or wear traditional clothing. And it was very intentional that they re-educate them and to try to extinguish the native culture. The children, as we find them, before we bring them to the government schools, we bring them in, clean them up. They are being rapidly brought from their state of comparative savagery and barbarism to one of civilization. Between 1819 and 1969, the federal government, with help from religious groups, operated or supported over 400 schools across 37 states. Estimates show that more than 100,000 Native children were taken from their families and placed in the schools. Lajmadir's research has led her to archives across the country, and it's drawn her repeatedly back to the grounds of an old boarding school a hundred miles from her home. So we can go upstairs. We walked in and all these strange people were standing there. People talking rough and mean and jerking us in line and we didn't know from one day or another what was going to happen to us. We were all afraid of being there. when I asked my father why we were sent to boarding schools. My dad said he had, they had no choice. We were really poor kids. And he said the superintendent had came to them and told them that uh, we would all have to go away to school. I have flashbacks getting to the school. Uh, I'm noticing that they're cutting everybody's hair off. Uh, there were kids uh, crying. I remember young, you know, young Native Americans. You know, I think that they uh, um, they prided them, themselves in their their long hair. Oh. 
So these are the sinks, like the troughs that the boy, little boys would have come wash up in the morning. Oh, this is really in bad shape. My father was beaten severely. Mom was also locked in closets for not speaking English. Some more stories of the old desks. And they were told, you know, you filthy stinking Indians and you'll never amount to anything. And back here is the dungeon. So this is where boys were put when they didn't speak English. At Boston, there was uh, 18 rooms on each wing. And they were all numbered. One, two, three, four, five, and um, there was an equipment room that didn't have a number on it. So we gave it that name, room 19. And uh, there was a little um, metal grill on the door, about this big. And uh, one day I noticed that there were some kids all standing around this grill. And you can hear this kid getting beaten in this room. One day I took some food out of the cafeteria and uh, I got into trouble for, uh, for doing that and I ended up in room 19. Your choice was the fiberglass fishing pole or the razor strap. They would haul us out early in the morning before breakfast to go and work. We did hard labor, like little tiny miniature slaves and whose brains were just now starting to function for five, six, seven years. When I look back and I think about the things that had happened to us, there was never anyone monitoring them. There were some of us that were getting abused and couldn't go nowhere. We had nowhere to run. As a little kid, where do you run? We were taught so much hardship that they didn't teach us nothing except anger as we got older. It was difficult for me. I was kind of a lost, uh, lost soul, you know, just stumbling around. It's hard to talk about it because it was something that I tried to block out of my mind. My folks did not send me or my brother and sister to boarding school, but I still suffer from the effects of them having attended boarding school. My father was very verbally abusive. We were hit a lot. I always say, where did they learn to be parents? A new reckoning over America's painful relationship with Native Americans. Well, now a federal investigation is going to look into this dark chapter of American history. In 2022, the Department of the Interior, under Native leadership for the first time, announced the initial findings of its unprecedented investigation into the boarding school system. We must shed light on the unspoken traumas of the past. Today, we take a critical step forward in that work. According to the report, 19 federal Indian boarding schools accounted for over 500 child deaths. The report is a damning reckoning of America's dark past. The government kept everything hush-hush. They don't want to be told that, they, you know, things like this happen. I think it should come out and should be told. The report is just the first step in what officials say will be part of a comprehensive process that aims to help bring accountability for a deeply consequential U.S. policy. I'm getting close to the end of my career. I had quite a few jobs in education and made my way back uh, to Dunseeth here uh, about four years ago. And I was thinking about these, um, these students that I went to school with. When I went down, down to my office there, and um, their faces are forever young in my mind. And a lot of them are gone now, of course, you know. When I think about that, I think about, uh, you know, what am, what am I doing here? What is my responsibility? You know, if I could uh, have a, 
an impact on one child's life, uh, especially a Native American one, uh, then, you know, I've, I've accomplished my goal. Divulging these stories that I've kept in my uh, vaults for 50 years is, uh, I think, is a way for me to heal. But those wounds are still there. They're still there, you know, after 50 years. So time doesn't heal all. <laughs>